Get your hands out of your pants. That's, that's, that's not a channel for that. Quit playing with your dinghy. This is a learned establishment for you to be awesome at Marvel Snap. And today we are looking at the best decks in Conquest, not Ladder, Conquest. Go over the strengths, the weaknesses, and some replacements for commonly unknown cards uh, in this installment of It's Made of Money. Hey, pasa nerditos. Let's jump straight in with the number one deck according to untapped.gg for Conquest. Bounce. B -b 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 Bounce. Bounce is sort of like um, Loki without the cheese. Huh? <laughs> it basically does the same thing Loki decks do, but instead of Collector and Loki, you have Dark Hawk and Black Widow, basically. It's really good against a wide range of decks, mostly because it disrupts and it puts out a ton of power, and uh, you can do tricky stuff with priority via Falcon and Beast, getting all your stuff back in your hand, and of course, big ol' werewolves. The disruption in this deck comes from your Korg, Black Widow, and Shadow King. If you're watching and you don't own Nico Minoru, um, try out Iceman, Spider-Ham, uh, Hawkeye even. Yeah, I mean, I ran Rocket Raccoon in some bounce lists. I mean, they weren't this type of bounce list, but if you're feeling, feeling frisky, try out Rocket Raccoon. It's not that bad. Also, be careful with your Shadow King. Um, as a matter of fact, you can cut Shadow King for something like Medusa. That's what I do because small brain. I'm not a smart man. Second best deck is Loki. Like I said earlier, Loki is just bounce sorta now. At least that's what it's devolved into. You got Loki and Collector as your win condition instead of Darkhawk and big one drops. The reason I think Loki is actually better than bounce is because um, your backup win condition is your opponent's deck but cheaper. And that's the strength of Loki. You can just win with giant collectors, efficient threats, or if you're like, well, this doesn't seem like it's working out too well, you just switch it up and uh, collector with a bunch of cards in your hand, and you just play out the opponent's uh, game plan on the last two turns of the game. Seems to work out. But Loki's a little tricky to use. I mean, I'm not too great at it, mostly because I don't particularly like the style of bounce and Loki. So um, if you're not good with Loki decks, get better. How dare you? Just kidding. You can play uh, the version that is running Quinjet and like Coulson and stuff instead. Basically, the flexible d cards in Loki decks are the Forge, Rogue, and Shang-Chi slot. Basically, the two tech cards and Forge. You can do Quinjet instead of Forge and then put Coulson instead of Rogue and whatever else you want instead of Shang-Chi. Next deck is Darkhawk Annihilus. Now, I don't want to brag or anything, but I'm going to. When Annihilus first came out, everyone was going, oh, junk this, junk this, oh, debris, hazmat, yeah. But I stood up like the brave gamer I am, and I said, no. I said, Darkhawk better than debris. And here's some proof. Actually, I put a video out. Um, you can check it. It was like a week or two old on my channel. Go check it out. But it's basically this list. The theory is Annihilus is sort of like Darkhawk, where you just run an Annihilus package with Hood, Annihilus, Sentry, I would put in Viper instead of Shadow King, or Carnage instead of Shadow King. And those four cards make up the Annihilus package, and you can slot them into lots of different decks. But since Annihilus is kind of like Darkhawk, you can take that four card package, why not do the same thing that people have already been doing with Darkhawk and taking that four card package and just putting them in decks and making good card decks? Well, you match those decks together, you get this. The main strength here is it's just it's good cards. It's just solid. Dude, Annihilus with Sentry is like a bajillion point swing. But really, it's, it's I did the math. It's about a bajillion and three. So yeah, you have Hood, the biggest one drop in the game, basically. Uh, Sentry, the biggest four drop in the game. Annihilus, ship all that stuff to the opponent. And if that doesn't work, who cares? You're playing good stuff with Korg and Darkhawk and Rockside. And then you have Eliath in here. It's just a really solid deck. Replacements for this deck. If you don't have Iron Lad, fret not, because Miss Marvel is perfectly fine here. Actually, I'd be willing to say it's a bit better, because sometimes you can play your Iron Lad and hit your Sentry or your Shadow King when you didn't really want to. Next up is Lockdown. If you if you like playing Lockdown, you probably shoplifted it in your life at some point. You probably eat at Olive Garden and you don't tip. 
Lockdown is strong against most decks, except for Loki and uh, Discard. Mostly because Loki and Discard don't need their six turn to put a bunch of power on the board. Neither does Discard. They don't really mind your Storm and your Professor X lanes. And as long as you don't pick off Discard's Modoc, you can't stop a Morbius from getting huge or a Discard from discarding Apocalypse with your Eliath. Yeah, you know how the deck works. Lock a lane down, spread power with Miss Marvel, Doctor Doom, uh, maybe scam another lane with uh, Professor X, finish off with an Eliath or a Gamora. It's pretty dirty. Um, I'd say the replacements here, you, like, Iron Lad is kind of necessary to the deck, but if you don't have Iron Lad, you could try out Jessica Jones. Next up is Discard. That card? No, Discard. Discard puts out big power, but it's super predictable, which is a little surprising because uh, the list is so high up on the list. Unpredictability and tech cards usually reign supreme in Conquest, so seeing Discard um, right under Lockdown on Darkhawk, it's a shocker. But to be fair, this is the metaphor of Discard. People are running minimal tech cards like Enchantress and Shang-Chi, and the other stuff people are trying to lock down lanes, um, like we mentioned earlier, you don't really care about that because all your stuff scales up really big um, with only one card in a lane. I do find it a little weird that still that it's doing well in Conquest because it's so predictable that like if you're playing against a discard deck, how are you ever losing more than one or two cubes in any given game? I don't understand. You see a Mobius and a Dracula on the board and you can't beat their power? Just bail. I don't really get how it's so good right now. But yeah, it's a solid deck. Um, there's nothing really to replace here. It's a budget deck too, so you should have all these cards if you've been playing for a while at least. Last deck, Infinite She-Hulk. Magic for turn 7. Play Leech. Make the opponent angry. Slam an Infinite or a Hulk and a free She-Hulk. This deck's weak against Loki because they have Snow Guard to completely ruin your day, pretty much. And if they Loki and pull your Hulk and your She-Hulk, um, they can sometimes keep up with their power output. It's good against um, decks like Bounce or Discard and uh, th those decks that just like, we're just going to put a bunch of power on the board. We don't have much tech or anything going on aside from how much power they put down. Infinite can usually handle those type of decks pretty well. I think the flexible cards here are Shocker, uh, basically. Uh, you could try out like Nebula there, or maybe even a Kang if you want to get really ridiculous. All right, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, uh, leave a comment that says Fisty Buns. Huh? But yeah, later on, nerds. Get your hands out of your pants.